Hi there. This is a year one microeconomics topic video covering demand. So what's a basic definition of demand? Well, demand for a good or service is the amount that people are willing and able to buy at a given price in a given time period. A key concept is effective demand. Because only if the demand for a, for a product is actually backed up by a willingness and an ability to pay, does demand become effective or actual in the market. The basic law of demand is that demand inver varies inversely with the price. So a fall in the market price makes a good or a service more affordable to consumers. Uh, an increase in the price makes the product less affordable. So here is our basic demand curve. In this case, it's the demand for coffee relative to the price. Price on the y-axis, quantity demanded for coffee on the x-axis. The price goes up, we see a contraction of demand. If the price goes down, we see an expansion of demand. Key revision point is that only changes in market price cause a movement along the demand curve. Now, why does the demand curve slope downwards, for example, when the price goes down? We need to make a distinction between the income effect and the substitution effect. First, the income effect. So if the price of a product goes down, for example, if coffee becomes cheaper, a fall in the price increases the real purchasing power of consumers. Assuming they've got a given budget per day or per week for their coffee, if the price goes down, that allows people to buy more coffee with a given amount of income. For normal goods, demand goes up as income increases in real terms. The substitution effect can also be quite powerful. It's important. So a fall, for example, in the price of good X, let's make it uh, the price of coffee, makes coffee relatively cheaper compared to substitutes, such as tea or bottled water. And if that happens, some consumers may switch to, the, to coffee, leading to increased demand. The key to the scale and the size of the substitution effect is whether two or more products are close substitutes. And also, critically, how easy and how inexpensive it is to make a switch. So when a price changes in the market, there's an income effect and a substitution effect. What causes the demand curve for a product to shift? In other words, what causes an outward movement of the demand curve? or possibly what causes an inward movement of the demand curve. Well, here are some key factors that influence the demand curve. I think most importantly, it's the change in the relative price of a substitute. Those are two goods in competitive demand. For example, two different brands of, of cola or, or, or carbonated water. A change in the price of complements can affect demand. And we'll have a separate topic video on joint demand. A fall in the price of one good will cause you to buy more of it and possibly more of a complementary product. The real income of consumers, income adjusted for inflation, is also important in determining consumer demand. Normally, for normal goods, when real income goes up, our ability to buy a good or service increases. And this causes an outward shift to the demand curve. Equally, when incomes fall, then we might expect an inward shift of demand, except for inferior goods. And again, we'll have a separate topic video on inferior goods. The distribution of income is also a key factor that can affect the demand curve. So, for example, if we shift income towards relatively poorer, lower income households, for example, they tend to spend a higher percentage of their income. And therefore, a redistribution of income could, in theory, increase total market demand. And then there are other factors that can clearly cause shifts in demand. The effects of effective, persuasive advertising and marketing. The level of interest rates can affect the demand for products, particularly those that are bought on credit. The, the population can affect demand. Not just the total size, affected, for example, by natural population growth and by migration, but also the age structure will affect both the level and the pattern of consumer demand. And something we'll look at in a moment or two, seasonality comes in. So there's often some strong seasonal factors affecting demand for different goods and services. And those of you interested in behavioural economics, 
social and emotional factors are increasingly seen as factors affecting the demand curve. Take a moment, if you need to, to press the pause button so you can get some good notes here on key causes of shifts in demand. Let's illustrate how this happens. Key revision point is on the bottom of this slide. A change in the market price, for example, the price of coffee, does not cause a shift in the demand curve. Please remember this, a change in the market price of coffee causes a movement along the demand curve. Factors other than the price of coffee, including those we've just been through, they, if they change, they will cause a shift in demand for coffee. D1 to D3 is an inward shift of demand. That means that less is bought at price P1. D1 to D2 is an outward shift of demand. That means more is demanded at each price. Let's take some examples of where demand has been shifting. Here's an increase in the global market demand for wearable devices, including smartwatches. Now, what's causing this? Well, clearly incomes have been rising, marketing's been very effective. So there's clearly been a huge rise in the global demand for wearable devices. How much further can it go? We wait to see. On the other hand, the market demand for Apple iPods has been shrinking rapidly, particularly since 2009, 2010, presumably because superior technology products have emerged. And so the market demand for this product has more or less collapsed. Changing preferences from consumers are also important in shifting demand. This chart shows the preferences for movie consumption in the UK. For example, buying a DVD, downloading it, going to see a film, for example. The pattern of demand is changing. Digital sales now account for 20%, and that can only rise, presumably. The share from physical sales of DVDs is falling. When was the last time you bought a DVD of a movie? On the other hand, sales can fall and then recover. This is fascinating. In the long run, we felt that the demand for vinyl albums in music stores would continue to fall. For most of the period, from 95 all the way through to 2005, 2006, indeed demand was falling. However, 2014, well over 1.2 million vinyl albums were sold. A six-figure increase on the 2007 level. Why is this happening? Is it an increase in retro demand from consumers? It's clearly a change in consumer preferences. People thought that vinyl sales would collapse, but maybe the vinyl countdown has been delayed. Seasonality is a really important factor. Not often covered in the textbooks, but we'll cover it here. So seasonality refers to fluctuations in sales related to the different seasons of the year. And for many products, there are strong seasonal peaks and troughs in both sales and production. So, for example, demand for chocolate at Easter is, of, is often strong. People demand more summer fruits in the summer and more winter clothing when the, when the conditions get harsh in the winter. So it's important to recognise that for many businesses, the demand is non-uniform during the year. There's very strong seasonality, ranging from clothing to tourism, even to theatres during the pantomime season. And something else that's worth considering is social and emotional factors. This is where increasingly behavioural economics is starting to come into mainstream thinking about the theory of demand. So social factors can affect behaviour and therefore demand for different products. For example, increased social awareness of the health risks from smoking, from gambling. Social norms. So these are norms of behaviour which become ingrained in people's patterns of behaviour. So, for example, the uh, increase in the price of plastic bags from supermarkets, the 5p charge in the UK, that may well be changing social norms. People now routinely going to supermarkets with their own bags. This can also affect the demand for recycled bags. Social pressures are important. Peer pressure affecting the demand for legal highs, for example. So it's important to understand social factors. And then we have emotional factors. 
This is where demand for a product can depend on whether somebody's in a cold state or a hot state. In other words, emotional volatility. Emotional arousal, for example, can affect the demand for health insurance after major incidents. Uh, people at times of personal stress and insecurity in their lives may engage in binge drinking and eating. Many of us have an emotional demand for products such as a season ticket to our favourite football club or emotional demand for particular types of antiques and collectibles. So economics textbooks don't really have much to say about social factors and emotional factors, but I think it's important you're rec you recognise them in your economics. And in a world of digital technology and global digital platforms, networks can affect demand choices. Increasingly, the choices that we make are influenced by the decisions and behaviour of others within our own social networks. The classic example surely has to be which messenger app we choose to use, which social network we choose to operate in. There are very, very strong network effects on our demand choices. Market demand is often linked, so lots and lots of factors come to play. The rise of the iPhone is one of the incredible features of our age. Launched in 2007, in 2015 annual sales are expected to climb above 230 million units. For, the, for Apple, the smartphone, the iPhone is both one of their biggest, most successful products, but also the biggest source of their profits. Absolutely staggering. Have a think about the demand factors that collectively have brought about the increase in market demand. It's obviously to do with price, to do with income, to do with marketing, but also think about the social, emotional and the network factors at play. So in this topic video, we have explored demand, the demand curve, shifts in demand, and some of the key factors that affect total market demand for goods and services.